Hello everyone. I've got an extra little video for you today because uh, today Suzanne, the winner of the thousand subscriber draw, received her winning prize, which was the bag painted with the image from my stitch book. So what follows next is a short video where I transform one of them, which is plain white cotton tote bag, into what I sent to her. I was super pleased with how it turned out. Well, I'm here about to paint the tote bag for Suzanne, who won the thousand subscriber draw. Uh, it's taken me a week to get organised, but I am, and I've already drawn the image onto the tote bag, and I've prepared by putting a piece of cardboard off a cardboard box inside a plastic bag, and then inside my tote bag, so that I don't want the uh, watercolour to be going through onto the the other side and I've got my um, green man image here uh, so I just need to just be keep looking at that um, as I'm doing things and hopefully I'm going to I'm a bit nervous to start I'm going to start actually just laying in a bit of very pale colour and I think the best thing that I'll be doing is not using too much water, but I'll be layering the colour up. So I'm going to start with quite a pale wash of green. Um, I'll start on one of the darker ones so that if I do it too dark, I'm already using too big a brush. So uh, I thought I might have washed it right over the top. But I've just changed my mind and I'm going to go with pale green into there and I'm just going to start and colour in my drawing. These lines really are just for reference because I'll be going over it all again um, to make the image really lovely. So it's just my initial my initial drawing. And oh, I've made a start because I haven't wet the fabric the water isn't going to migrate very far so really all I have to do is just make sure that I I put the paint exactly where I know it's going to go so I'm going to darken that one down already because it's one of my dark leather leaves in fact, that couldn't be a better colour. Exactly. And I'm going to continue on. And hope that I'm going to get a good image. I'm doing a bit of a bluey green one, I think. I've got a lot of a lot of nice um, bluey green on here. I'll go. I think I'll go in here. I'm not slavishly copying it, but you'll definitely be able to see that the image is, is from my embroidery. Quite pleased already. And a bit of a yellowy green. And so what I'll do is I'll carry on painting this in. And I'll be back when When I'm ready to do the detail. I 
It's the first time I've actually tried to paint a picture with the ink Thames actually. So it's going to be interesting to see how the technique differs. Um, because it will be very different trying to stay as a certain colour um, and whether the water wants to migrate where I don't want it to go. So that is all going to be quite nice to explore. But so far so good. It is going on really nice. Okay. Come back to you when there's a bit more done. Well, I've got the first layer of ink tents on and I'm quite pleased with it so far. So I'm going to let this dry and do another layer and probably come back to you when I've finished it. I've now got all of the lines back on so I'm really pleased with how this has come out. I haven't actually used the ink tents in the same manner. I usually do really loose painting of fabric that I can then over embroider. It's been a different experience using it to actually paint in a design um, but I think I've learned a lot by doing it and I was pleased I originally drew the design on um, just the basic outlines of everything filling in the shapes was pretty okay um, it did bleed over but the, the trick is to make up a creamy um, consistency of the ink tents so there's not a huge amount of water that will migrate uh, and basically that did work in most of these. Well, at the very beginning, which was this bit I did, it did migrate a little bit here. It's not overly noticeable and it doesn't really matter to me because I was always going to try and make the background blue because it's blue silk that the green man is embroidered onto. Um, but what was really nice was going over everything at the end with all of the stitching lines and the veins and his eyes uh, and all of this detail down here. That really brought the whole design to life so I'm really pleased about that. So I'm about to pull in the blue. So what I don't want is a hard edge anywhere but I also so I would need to use water. But what I don't, also don't want is that the blue to migrate into here. So it's going to be a bit of a practice. I've got clean water. I've also got my cup of tea. And I'm ready to start. So I'm going to start by making up a very thin wash of a lovely pale blue. I need a bluey green eventually. I'm going to just put a pool of water on my tin, my ink tense tin lid and I'm using just I'm going to carry on using just two specific colours I'm making it very watery but then I'm not going to pick up very much I'm going to start here and see how it goes And I think that's going to work well. We need more colour. So I'm going to be careful pushing this in round the design. But then I'm going to use more water to bring the design out. And I will then switch to another brush. I actually nearly put the brush in my tea. In fact I've nearly done it again so I'm moving my tea and I will continue to pull the colour all around. Switch my brush. You 
can see I'm trying not to use a huge amount of water, but I do want the paint to be watery. So I want it to be able to fade away into the background. And that's pretty much, I think, if I can continue doing that. What I can then do, I can always overlayer this if I want to make marbling and different areas where it's darker or lighter. So I've come up with a particular technique for doing um, the outside because I do want it to fade away but I don't want the, the colour to be migrating inwards and so I'm picking up just a smaller bit to do into these into the intricacies of the design. I haven't got a huge amount of water on the brush but I'm just using these two colours which are going to marble together really nicely and as soon as I've got around the intricacy I'm not necessarily even going up to the line I'm letting it migrate that tiny little bit I'm going in with my bigger brush but I'm not just soaking the cloth I have got the same colour on exactly I don't want lots of water to be near the design I'm using a very light touch, feathering it out, but then what I end up doing is now that this cloth is wet, I end up dropping a bit of colour in and letting that just pull through. And so that's how I can get a really nice, well hopefully, a nice marbled effect. And then I'm back in with my fine brush and I'm always keeping the wet edge when it's away from my design. Trying not to let that dry at all. And I am letting the fabric pull the water off my brush but I'm not soaking it like I was doing before. Light touch. And then I'll go back in with a bit of a darker colour and I'll just drop it on and let it migrate through. Actually it occurred to me, while I'm sitting here doing this, that um, maybe might be something I could get printed and then possibly people would like to buy them but well, goodness knows there's all sorts of ideas that sometimes they never come to any fruition I'm going to go back in with my tiny brush here I think it definitely helped having the design drawn on with the permanent pen in the first place because I had a definite a definite outline to be working to but as the paint went over it it just meant that I could see that to put my design back on with the permanent pen well I've actually finished it all together uh, excepting for putting my name on in the end I decided I didn't like to see the white bag at all so I've painted the whole thing in and it actually looks more like the page now with the whole thing done and I marbled the back and the, and the handles so I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out now I'm just going to put Marion's World and my little bow and arrow on the bottom and like I've explained before on doing the, the flower pages with the writing there's nothing wrong with planning it out and deciding what you'd like to do so I thought I'd put it there and I planned it out because I didn't want it to be too big but I didn't want it to be you know in the way of anything and I'm going to do that now and then that'll be finished and it'll be winging its way 
to the winner of the thousand subscriber draw. Here it goes. Maybe I need a ruler to keep it straight. Maybe not. Maybe I just go for it. That's what I usually do. There we go, all finished. I hope you thought that I did a nice job with that bag. Um, I was really pleased with it and uh, Suzanne's messaged me to say that she's over the moon. So um, until next time, I'm just going to leave it there and say, uh, press the like button, subscribe if you would like to, and um, thank you all and bye-bye from Marine's World. See you next time.